Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining uh, my presentation today. Um, so um, our uh, paper title is Multilayer Triboelectric Energy Harvester as a Smart Floor Mat. And uh, the author list is uh, the Fatma Özdoğru, Sarjan Koca, uh, Seval Kinden. It's me. So we are uh, from Eskişehir Technical University uh, from the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering uh, from Turkey. And Shavana Tabassum is from the University of Texas at Tyler, uh, Department of Electrical Engineering uh, from uh, US. Um, firstly, I want to introduce myself uh, briefly. So I received my PhD degree in electrical engineering uh, from Iowa State University, USA in uh, 2018. Uh, my uh, PhD uh, thesis was on uh, graphene-based flexible sensors uh, towards electronic variables. Um, I'm currently uh, an assistant professor at Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering at Eskisher Technical University. Um, my current uh, uh, research interest, uh, my current re my current research interests include uh, MEMS, NEMS, uh, variable electronics, uh, energy harvesters, uh, flexible sensors, micro nano uh, fabrications, and uh, their uh, potential um, applications. Uh, my presentation outline, uh, actually, I'm going to start with the introduction and I'm, I'm going to continue with the methods and uh, the experimental studies and it will be followed by uh, results and discussion. And lastly, I'm going to end up my presentation with the conclusions and the acknowledgements. Um, so first of all, um, I want to uh, talk about the uh, energy harvesting uh, mechanisms. So um, the piezoelectric generators, uh, pyroelectric generators and the triboelectric gener generators are uh, commonly used energy harvesting uh, mechanisms. So first of all, uh, the piezoelectric generators, um, uh, actually the, here, uh, as you can see from the figure, uh, the piezoelectric material, or it's, uh, it can be crystal, is placed uh, between uh, two metal plates. So when there is no uh, any applied uh, pressure, uh, the material is in, in the perfect balance and it does not any conduct uh, electrical current. So, uh, but when the mechanical pressure is applied to the material, so it forces uh, the electric charge within the crystal, uh, uh, the out of balance, so um, the uh, alternating uh, current is uh, formed. Um, so actually the piezoelectricity is based on the uh, materials, uh, the ability of the materials to generate um, alternating current voltage when subjected to the mechanical stress, stress of vibration or vice versa. Um, so for the pyroelectric uh, generators, um, so the pirate electricity uh, can be described as the ability of the certain materials to generate uh, a temporary uh, voltage uh, when they are heated or uh, cooled. So the change uh, in the temperature, uh, the change in the temperature of the material modifies the position of the atoms slightly within the crystal structure, uh, such that the polarization of the uh, material changes. So it induces the uh, alternating current uh, formation. So lastly, uh, the triboelectric generator. Um, so uh, here is uh, our energy harvester design is based on the uh, triboelectric effect. So the triboelectric generators uh, converts the external uh, mechanical energy into the electricity based on um, the triboelectric effect and the electrostatic induction. Uh, so here on the uh, list, uh, you see the materials tendency to earn electron uh, or uh, lose electron when it makes a contact with other uh, materials. So here uh, on the right hand side the uh, schematic, uh, we see uh, different uh, materials. Here is one triboelectric surface is a skin. So when they uh, touch, when it touches to another uh, triboelectric surface, so one is charged positively and another one is charges uh, negatively. So this is the uh, main uh, main thing of the triboelectric uh, effect to harvest energy from the mechanical uh, movement. Actually, I will explain the detail of the uh, current formation 
for the triboelectric gener generators uh, with our uh, design. So I will not in get into detail of that part. Um, as the state of uh, our as the state of our technologies, um, so uh, since uh, we uh, we know that the tanks have uh, different uh, working uh, modes uh, like a uh, sliding mode, a uh, contact separation mode, a uh, single electrode mode, and the freestanding mode. So here we see the uh, sliding mode on the left hand side. So here, uh, when the one material is sliding on uh, other material, so it makes them charge oppositely. Then uh, it induce, induce the electrons uh, flowing uh, between the electrodes uh, connected at the back side of the uh, materials. So on the right hand side, uh, we see the contact separation mode here. Uh, the same logic is valid, but the um, AC formation, AC signal formation is due to the vertical contact and the separation of the triboelectric uh, surface. So now um, I want to talk about uh, our uh, design, uh, the fabrication of uh, the uh, triboelectric generator. Um, so here you see the schematic of our uh, design and also the real uh, image of uh, our uh, tank. So um, the tank design uh, formed in this work uh, is in zigzag shape where it comes with uh, some advantages like uh, multiple tanks in one structure and reversibly foldable device structure. Uh, actually, as it's seen uh, on the uh, schematic, uh, so the device body is made of uh, 3D printed um, thermoplastic uh, polyurethane TPU. Um, so here it is uh, shown in the uh, green color. And uh, also, uh, as the triboelectric surface and the electrode material, so the copper film used as a both triboelectric surface and the electrode. And the PTFE, also it is shown as here as a uh, brown color. And also the PTFE used as another triboelectric surface is shown in gray color. Uh, so for the device uh, fabrication, uh, first of all, all the 3D printed TPU layers are coated with the copper films. And then um, actually it works as the uh, first triboelectric surface and the electrode at the same time. And then the alternate layers of uh, copper films are coated with the PTFE film. Then it, it, we formed our second uh, triboelectric surface. So when we compress the device, and then they will touch to each other and uh, the electrons uh, are going to flow between the electrodes that are connected at the back side of these materials. And after that, uh, finally, we uh, made the electrical wire uh, connections and the device fabrication is uh, completed. Um, as the working mechanism of the device is uh, here, uh, uh, actually, when the PTFE film uh, and the copper films undergo a physical contact and the separation, so the opposite charge, uh, static charge form on the layer surface. So uh, as you can see here on A, uh, when the tank array was pressed, a contact uh, was formed, uh, which results in a negative charge on the PTFE film and the positive charge on the electrode one. And actually, we have a two electrode copper uh, film electrodes, so we call them electrode one and electrode two. And here, the brown color is shown uh, for uh, copper, and the uh, um, blue color is shown for uh, PTFE. Um, so. So then uh, uh, after we pr completely press the device, so we see that the uh, electrode one is charged positively and PTFE uh, film was uh, negatively. Um, when the, pre uh, the pressure was uh, when the pressure was released, then the two surfaces with the opposite charges were uh, sep are, uh, separated. And uh, we know that the conductors tend to keep um, their neutrality. So electrons flow from electrode two to the electrode one through the external load to make the uh, electrode one uh, neutral, we see in uh, B. Um, and then uh, when the tank was uh, fully separated, uh, it's shown in C, the PTFE was still positively charged uh, while the electrode one become neutral. 
And uh, then after that, uh, when the tank was pressed again, it's shown in D, the electrons flow from electrode 1 to the electrode 2 uh, due to the ele triboelectric effect between the copper and the PTFE surface, and then made the electrode 1 uh, positively charged again. And uh, when we go back to the A, uh, then we see that the electrode 2 uh, uh, becomes, uh, I'm sorry, the electrode 1 uh, becomes again uh, charged positively and the PTFE becomes charged um, uh, negatively. Uh, here the electrode 2 is uh, uh, neutral because the, in, this, in D uh, the electron uh, were flowing from electrode 1 to the electrode 2. So that's why when they make a full contact, so electrode 1 fully charged positively, PTFE uh, is charged negatively and electrode 2 is uh, neutral. So uh, this, uh, th when this contact and separation uh, mode uh, uh, was repeated, so the electrons flowed back and forth between the electrodes, and uh, that results in uh, AC output. Um, as a device uh, characterization, um, so uh, we see that the um, electrical output performance of one zigzag shaped a multilayered uh, tank. So here uh, we, we see that the multilayered, one zigzag multilayered tank, here it's, uh, it contains uh, three single uh, tank units. So here is the tank one, tank two, and the, here is the tank three. So on the uh, on the left hand side uh, uh, on the left hand side of the page we see the uh, the maximum power obtained uh, at the resistance of the 10 mega ohm. So here uh, we we can uh, say that uh, the um, multi layered um, one zigzag shaped uh, multi layered tank containing three single units had a maximum power uh, output power uh, of 26.35 microwatt at the match load resistance of 10 mega ohm and on the right hand side of the page uh, the maximum uh, output short circuit, short circuit current and open circuit voltage are obtained as uh, 2.98 microampere and 29.79 uh, volt uh, respectively so here on uh, on the graphs, the peak values of the measurements uh, were not uniform um, because of different amounts of pressure uh, applied during uh, testing. So that's why they are not uh, uniform. Um, so here, as the uh, application, uh, I, I mean, as the application of smart floor mat. So I want to first talk about the formation of this more uh, smart floor mat. So here. Uh, uh, as you can see here on the figure on the left hand side, so the eight multi-layered uh, tank units uh, were combined in the shape of the multi-triangular so uh, that the rectangular floor mat was formed. So here you see uh, multi-triangular uh, formation from um, the uh, multi-layer uh, tanks. And so here uh, one unit, as you can see here, shows these uh, three, uh, one, one multi-layer tank, including three single uh, tank units. Uh, actually, the zigzag shaped multi-layer tanks were placed in a triangular shape to ensure that the applied pressure was shared uniformly uh, among uh, all, all the tank units. And uh, in order to uh, form the uh, floor mat, the wooden plate with the openings, uh, as you can see here, uh, was put on the tank array to form the floor mat. Um, and uh, you see uh, on the figure B, uh, you see the side view of the uh, floor mat. And also on figure C, you see the top view of uh, the uh, rectangular floor mat. So. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, on the right hand side, uh, you see the connection uh, of the tank units uh, uh, within this uh, uh, multi triangular uh, formation of the uh, multi layer zigzag shaped tank units. Um, so, uh, here um, the, uh, the zig three zigzag shaped multi layer tank units uh, here uh, it's shown uh, in one tank unit. So they are, they are connected in parallel uh, to each other. 
And then uh, we, uh, we uh, fabricated eight of them and replaced like this to form the uh, floor mat. And then we connected them uh, into series to uh, create uh, uh, AC voltage at the output of uh, floor mat. Um, so as the application uh, of the um, uh, uh, design floor, smart floor mat, so uh, actually the monitoring of the occupancy of the indoor places like uh, shopping malls, um, libraries become more critical uh, with the COVID-19. Um, so uh, these kinds of devices can be integrated at the entrance and the exit of indoor places to control the number of people inside and the occupancy rate can be kept at, kept at safe level. Uh, kept at safe level. Uh, here, uh, the designed uh, smart, smart floor mat uh, was uh, used to track the number of the students uh, entering and the leaving the library. Um, here uh, on the on the left hand side, you see the output display show uh, zero uh, when no student was entering the library. But then the device detected three students entering the library at 10:47 a.m. and then it detected the uh, 37 students entered at the library at uh, um, at um, at the, at 11:50. 2 a.m. So there are uh, 37 students inside the library. So therefore, uh, th uh, therefore, uh, this tank-based uh, smart floor can be used to track the occupancy uh, in the la library for this application. But as I said before, it can be applied to another different kinds of uh, actually uh, indoor places. Uh, also, the same floor mat, mat uh, was also demonstrated to light up uh, 40 light emitting diodes uh, here as shown on the right hand side. Actually, we tried to um, light up the, um, uh, the uh, ESTU uh, logo. It's our um, university's uh, name, you know, our university name, actually. So we light up um, these uh, LEDs. Uh, with our uh, uh, smart floor uh, mat as well. Um, as the conclusion, um, so uh, a foldable uh, tribal electric electrification based energy harvesting device has been designed in this work. And this device is easy to fabricate without requiring any expensive instrumentation or complex uh, procedure. So, and also this smart energy harvesting device was demonstrated to generate maximum output power of 119.7 microwatt, which light up uh, to like for the light emitting diodes. And uh, it has been used as, a, uh, as an application. It has been used as a smart floor for monitoring the number of uh, people entering and the living library. And also it can be integrated to another uh, indoor places as well. And uh, the, the, this tank uh, the device will be pr a promising solution for efficient and low cost uh, harvesting of daily human motion and ambient energy to power uh, variable devices for multitude uh, of uh, applications. Um, actually, I, I would like to thank uh, the uh, Scientific and Technological Research uh, Council of the um, Turkey under uh, 2209, a university student research uh, projects support uh, program. Uh, and also, I would like to thank ISQED uh, uh, committee uh, members, all the people uh, that uh, gives us this chance to present our work in this uh, conference. So I would like to thank all of you uh, uh, for joining my presentations again. Um, so if you have um, any questions, here's our uh, contact information. And it's me, Saval Kinden, and also the Shavana Tabassum is another uh, author in our uh, paper. So you can uh, uh, contact us if you have any question regarding our uh, work. Um, so I, uh, I end up my presentation here. Uh, so if you have any uh, questions, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you.